please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along in the authorized version of the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along in the scriptures. Check me out. Check me out to make sure I'm not skipping a groove, okay? Check me out to make sure I'm telling you the truth. And you know what? Um, check me out. Uh, we read some verses today, and you want, you know, pause the video, read the context. Check me out. Follow me along. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Okay? It's imperative that you do this. Follow me along. Okay? Today, we're going to be talking about yet another topic and subject that we have covered before. But um, this video has been birthed, if you will, by a recent experience that a brother of mine has gone through. Um, a very tragic and troubling thing that he went through. And this, this video is kind of the result thereof. Okay? Infiltrators versus false converts. That's what we're going to be talking about today. But, turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, you have to remember. Matthew chapter 7 is part of the Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. But we today can learn things from the Sermon on the Mount for our instruction in righteousness for us today. Doctrinally, as pertaining how one is made right with God within the present dispensation, um, doctrinally this does not apply for us. But instruction and righteousness, which we are going to be looking at this for today, it applies as far as instruction and righteousness. Matthew chapter 7, we're going to be reading verses 13 on to verse 20. Follow me along. Check this out. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now, we're going to read very quickly, hold your place here, and go to the fourth proverb, which we touched on in the previous video about the Jesuit, the Jesuit states of America. I like that one, brother. I like that a lot. I like that. The Jesuit states of America. By the way, I do not hate America. I don't. I hate Catholicism. There's a big difference. Even though you cannot distinguish Catholicism from America pretty much as it stands today. But I do not hate America. This, this fictitious dream that is America. It would be nice if it could be real. It would be nice if it were ever at any time real. But it's not. I don't hate America. I hate Catholicism. Just to let you know that. But Proverbs chapter 4, okay? Talking about... How we read here, yes, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Yeah, wide, broad, encompassing many things. There are so many things the world has to offer that you could add in to make your life for Christ even better, right? Worldly things. What's, what's wrong? God doesn't expect you to, what is it? Go into a coffin and die, right? But yet we are to die. We are to mortify, kill ourselves in a way. Meaning, putting down our flesh. We are to have our pride, our, our self-righteousness killed. Yes. There is to be death within the life of someone of the church of the living God. 
Yes, there is. Death to self. He must increase. And we must decrease. All right? Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 25 on to verse 27. Let thine eyes look right on. Keep your eye upon Jesus. <laughs> yes. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Don't go this way, don't go that way, but go straight forward. Why? Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Oh, how much of Christianity today wants to bring in all the flavors of the world and use it for... You can't take things of the world and transform them into things to be used as the church of the living God. You can't take things that are pagan and then try to transform them into godly things as to be used by the church of the living God. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. But let's continue. Verse 15 in Matthew chapter 7. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. False prophets. Hold your place here and go to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. We've covered this before. 1 John chapter 4. There are imbeciles out there who want you to believe that someone, can, that someone is saved if they can merely say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. That that proves that someone is saved. I, for a while, taught and believed that myself. I was wrong. And the Lord rebuked me through uh, uh, on that. He did. Using people, um, using many people, and using a, also a charismatic psychopath as well. Okay, yeah. To correct me of my error. I once thought that if someone could say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, Jesus is the Lord, uh, that that meant someone was saved. I was wrong. But see, our Lord says in verse 15, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 and verse 6. Beloved, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. False prophets. A prophet is today, in this dispensation, is someone who is first of all saved. And has the Lord, the Holy Ghost. You know, the Lord is that spirit dwelling within in them. And they have the scriptures. Okay? Not a Bible, the scriptures. But see, prophesying for today is someone who is first saved, speaking unto you from the Spirit of God that dwells within them, the Holy Ghost, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that Spirit, the Lord within that saved person, speaking to you from the scriptures. That is prophesying today. Okay? And there are many false prophets out there today. The Old Testament prophet giving advanced unknown revelation? No, no. Why? Because in the Old Testament, when the Old Testament prophets were in operation, the Spirit of God was not a permanent resident within people within that dispensation as he is today. Because today, if you are truly saved, you are once saved, always saved, sealed unto the day of redemption, you have God living within you. And God living within you will speak unto others through the scripture. That is prophesying today. Okay? Okay? Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit, and now note that that's a lowercase s. 
Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. What does that mean? Is, is. Present tense, he's alive. And is come in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? If you're saved, Jesus Christ is in you. Okay? See, Bibles, most of them, if not all, if not all, says has. Has is confusion because has could mean, could mean present tense, but also it could mean past tense. See, the God of Catholicism, who was and is not and will never be, okay? <laughs> he's, he's nothing. He's the little G God of this world. The God of the scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, is alive. He is alive. He is alive in the church, the body of Christ, the church of the living God. Those who believe on him and are saved, born again, converted. He is alive. He is. It is what it is. But see, the Bible say has. Has. There are so many Christians out there who preach to you a dead Christ. A dead Christ. One who isn't, but yet is. Christians, they preach what? Primarily that man of sin, the son of perdition, Satan, Antichrist. Right? They preach that religion of Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you, God, if you are saved, than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And this in context is talking about those who will be preaching and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what that is talking about. It's not a proof text to uh, show whether or not someone is saved or lost. If someone is, is preaching to you Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? He's alive. He is. Okay? Someone who is preaching the true God of the scriptures will confess because they're preaching the true God, the Jesus Christ that is. But see, the infiltrator and the false uh, convert, they don't preach the Christ of the scriptures. Not in totality. Not in totality. They preach antichrist. Antichrist, which is what? Number one, against Christ, and number two, to replace. Okay? Now let's continue in Matthew chapter 7. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. And there are those out there who can put on a really good facade and even seem to have fruits work on meat for repentance. They can, it could seem that way. But see, if you talk to them personally, if you get to them and you get to speak to them outside of the limelight, outside of public influence, what are they like? The guy who's speaking to you, if you were to meet me personally, is the same one who, are your, who you would meet personally. Okay? 
This isn't, this isn't an act. This isn't, uh, this isn't a theater. Okay? But for many it is. For many it is. For many it is. And go to Jeremiah chapter 23 in the Old Testament. Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 16, on to verse 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Mm. They say still unto them that despise me, that despise me, you want to show a way, you want to know a good way of how someone despises the Lord? They call upon, they say, hey, we're saved. We're of the church of the living God. But yet they regard the scriptures. They regard what the scriptures talk about and teach about being a new creature and how we are to live our lives in accordance with scripture. Someone who hates the Lord is someone who chooses themselves over what God hath said, plainly put. And an infiltrator, someone who is working for the devil while putting on the guise, the facade, as if he is of us. Yes. See, someone who is an infiltrator, and we talked at length about infiltrators, coadjutors, working for the Vatican, working for Satan. We've talked a lot about their tactics. There will there'll be several uh, videos in the description box if you have any question about this, okay? But see, the infiltrator will try to uplift someone in their sin, to get them away from the truth of the scripture by twisting it, promoting whoever they work for, their agenda, okay? They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the, the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Oh boy. Now look at that verse. Look at that verse. They shall say unto them that despise me. The Lord has said, ye shall have peace. God's not mad at you. God loves you. There are many pathways to God. It's all God. Right? Just believe. Mm hmm and they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Hey, you're, you're saved because you, you're just believed. Don't worry about sin. Don't worry about it. Hey, you got to make a living somehow, right? God doesn't expect you to crawl into a coffin and die. No. No, he wants you to live life abundantly. Right? Yeah. For who has stood... In the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word. Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days you shall consider it perfectly. Yeah, when God is pouring his judgment upon this earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. They ran. The false prophet, the infiltrator. They run. They run. They try to worm themselves into little uh, gatherings, into little um, uh, bodies of believers. Sounding like one of you. You know, trying to get in. Yeah. And they run to the forefront. They run. They want to be popular. They have over a hundred channels. <laughs> and speak about popular topics. Topics that they don't even get from themselves. That they're stealing from other people. Not stealing. But those who are mentoring them. Saying, sure, go ahead. Use what I do. Because they don't think for themselves. They're natural men. 
not regenerate. See, but they run. They want to be. They want to be the forefront. They want. You know, they they get their videos monetized. They they boast about how people give to their ministry and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But if they had stood in my counsel and had, and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from the evil of their of from their turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Hmm. And you look at some of these false converts that these infiltrators have created. Oh wow. Wow. Perfect example of this are the easy believism heretics. Perfect example. They come along and say, just believe. And they twist the scriptures to say that repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Repentance is a work. Calling upon the name of the Lord is a work. Okay. Or uh, calling upon the name of the Lord is for the Jews and not for the Gentiles and stuff like that. Not for us today. Yeah. And then see... Someone who falls under that bewitching witchcraft of theirs. Make them twofold more the child of hell than themselves. Because they save themselves by their own belief. Hence, the infiltrator doesn't turn people from their evil way, but make them far more worse. And if you've ever dealt with people who are easy believers and heretics, who have been diluted by these infiltrators... Who taught them. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 33. Like I said. Very familiar verses that we have gone over before. But like I said. This was brought about by recent things. That a brother of mine went through. And um, needing to be addressed again. Ezekiel chapter 33. Verses 30. On to verse 33. Also thou son of man. The children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. And speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh. And they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words. But they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love. False convert. But their heart goeth after their covetousness. That idolatry. And the idol and the idol that they are worshipping is themselves. And lo. Thou art unto them a very lovely song uh, of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. They shew much love with their mouth, but their hearts are far gone. Their hearts are after their covetousness. After, I, 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 me, me, me. Hence the false convert uses religion as a crux to get what they want. To make their life better. They go after the Lord because they were fed, but not because they saw the miracle of the loaves. Second Peter Chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. False convert. They show much love, but their hearts are after their covetousness. Self-seeking. Okay? 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. And the infiltrator. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Oh uh, yeah, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 19. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promised them liberty, 
They themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought in bondage. Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. We want verses 22 on to verse 29. Acts chapter 15, verses 22 on to verse 29. You got to remember in Acts 15, there were Judaizers come along saying that people had to keep the law of Moses in order to be saved. Okay? Acts chapter 15, verses 22 on to verse 29. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren sent greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as ye ha for as much as we have heard, we've heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. See, subverting the hearers. Someone who is subverting. Um, uh, uh, words to no prophet saying to you, you got to keep the law to be saved. An example of it. Okay? Those are words to no prophet subverting the souls of the hearers. Okay? It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth, where it seemed good to the Holy Ghost, and to us, to God first, okay, to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. And what are they? That ye abstain from meats offered unto idols, like, you know, the little wafer cookie, okay? And from blood, from blood, the chalice, you know, the wine that uh, the Jesuit priest makes uh, actual blood, okay? Or blood in general, you know, blood soup, okay? And from fornication, from which if ye keep yourself, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. Those who come in and trouble you, trouble you, trouble you such as infiltrators. They'll worm in, agreeing with you, looking as if they're one of us. They'll worm in. But something, they'll, they'll wait for a cue from their provincial, whoever he is, and then they'll go off whoa, in another direction, usually making no sense whatever. Drop a dirty bomb and then go away. Mm. Those are tactics of infiltrators. And infiltrators come in looking like they are one of us of the Church of the Living God. And at first, sounding almost spot on. you got to remember, a good example of this is uh, Bill Graham. Who, when he began, Bill Graham, when he began, read from the authorized version of the Scriptures, preached repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, the true gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But as he continued... We all know what became of Billy Graham. If any of you think that Billy Graham was saved and of the Church of the Living God, I feel really bad for you. But that's a perfect example of an infiltrator. He was a 33rd degree Freemason. Okay? He, he, was, uh, he was in the pocket of the Vatican. Okay? Perfect example of an infiltrator. Okay? Perfect example. Now go to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Oh, excuse me. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. We want verses 6 on verse 10. I marvel 
that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Willing, and this right there, verse 6, is very telling about what some of the Galatians were like at the time when Paul addressed them. They were being led astray by Judaizers, okay? Telling them that they have to keep the law in order to stay saved. You got a lot of people here today who call themselves Christians who say that you got to keep the commandments today. Go under the law. Got to be a Hebrew. Yeah, and if you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Okay? Yeah. Culturally is a different thing. Self-ethically, we're all one if you come to the Lord on his terms. Okay? But see, verse 6 tells us something. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Some, like, again... God doesn't want us to, you know, God doesn't want us to crawl into a coffin and die. Meaning that the way of Christ is hard. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Because the way of Christ is contrary to the skin suit. And see, a coadjutor and a false convert. One thing they all have in common, it's all about flesh to them. The infiltrator, usually a Jesuit coadjutor, has everything to do with the flesh and the things that pertain unto the flesh. The false convert also, it's all about flesh to them. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Oh, yeah. Accursed. Accursed. Another gospel. Another Jesus. Another gospel. Just believe. Another gospel. You got to keep the law of Moses. Another gospel. God loves you. Another Jesus. A Jesus who isn't mad. Or excuse me. A Jesus that isn't angry at sin. A Jesus who doesn't judge. A Jesus who is okay with you being exactly who you are. <laughs> As we said before. So say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? Ah! For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Right there. Pleasing men or God. An infiltrator. An, infil an infiltrator excels at pleasing men. Why? Because their ways are movable. They do what they got to do to adapt. They're chameleon. They'll shed one skin to put on another, just like Jesuits do. In order to get in, they'll say what they got to say. They'll become what they have to become in order to get in. And once they're in, they gain the confidences and then, boom, drop a dirty bomb or start a rumor. Or start backbiting. Or start some kind of controversy. Oh, that's happened to me. I met a, a couple a while ago who came, who we were having fellowship with. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they go this way and say, well, we saw something in Brad. You know? And then they go on the offensive. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And these people... Very generous, kind and giving. And then all of a sudden, whoo, they go off into another direction. They were infiltrators. They were infiltrators. Okay. And also go to Titus. Titus. Titus, chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 16. 
For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Oh, a, the Christians, a people, a certain people are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. They were saying that about a kindred within the kindred? Hmm, interesting. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Infiltrators versus false convert. I'm going to give you an example here. Um, a good scriptural definition of a false of an infiltrator, by the way. First um, Peter chapter five, verse eight. First Peter five, verse eight. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Mm, seeking whom he may devour. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. As a roaring lion. And our Lord at his second coming is going to be known as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Mm. See, an infiltrator, uh, I'm going to give you a, a little examples here. Good example of an infiltrator. There is a young man out there who began his career, his social media career, through video gaming. And then something happened where this young man decided that it would be more profitable for him to try to pass off that he was a Christian. And he did a video that was very popular where he's a very skinny, um, sickly looking young man, where he... He said something like, I gave my life to Jesus Christ, and then he goes and puts himself into a dryer. Okay? Yeah, that's one of the things that got him his fame. But anyway, this, this young man, who's all the while under the tutelage of an old, disturbed, disgusting infiltrator, who in his own right, as far as infiltrators go, is pretty good for what he does. But see... The ultimate weakness of any ill infiltrator is the biggest weakness that they have is not being able to compose themselves. And the one of the biggest weaknesses that an infiltrator can have is that they can't control that temper of theirs. Yeah, yeah. But this young man, okay, he came on, he first started out with the easy believism, uh, easy believism crowd, with the uh, aligning himself with um, uh, the guy from Canada and also from uh, the Inquisitor from Queens, New York, being with one of uh, being one of them, and identified himself with them with phrases like "we," "us," "that," and stuff like that, you know. But something happened where he went afoul of that, and all the while too, this young man had as his target from the very inception his holiness from Maine Mr. Denlinger had a real big problem with him okay yes yes all the while but then after he was with this uh, group of the uh, you know from the Inquisitor you know uh, from New York uh, Mr. Fenninger he was with them uh, he got out of that but then he went and wormed himself in Using phrases like we, us, associating himself with the, with the crowd, you know, the crowd from the, His Holiness of Maine. Wormed his way into that uh, little fray. And was there for a while. Being in that whole situation and identifying himself as one of them. And even making some strides. But then again, something happened there. And then he went out of that. 
and went right back. And uh, when he went uh, into the crowd of His Holiness from Maine, okay, he went into that crowd. He, he did repentance videos and saying I was wrong, blah, 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 okay. But then something happened, and then he went out of that crowd, and now he's going again and attacking His Holiness from Maine, Mr. Denlinger, again, okay. That's an infiltrator. That's an infiltrator. Not saved, okay? And all the while, being under the tutelage of an older infiltrator, okay? But see, that, that's what infiltrators do, okay? Infiltrators do that, all right? Galatians chapter 2. Go back to Galatians. Galatians chapter 2, okay? Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, we want verses 1 on to verse 5. Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation, and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run, or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, brought in, okay? Who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. See, infiltrators come in to a circle of believers, brought in, it's like, hey, brother so-and-so, or they are able to worm their way in. They get someone, and then they ask, well, who do you, you know, let's fellowship. They're all about, let's say, you know, you want to do a live stream? They're all about that kind of stuff. So they can get in and infiltrate, okay? They get in, and they, they're usually very pliable. They're very soft. They're very soft-spoken, very friendly, until something happens, whatever it is, and then they get the order from their provincial, and they go, whoop! Just like that couple I was mentioning to you before. Came in very sweet and very nice and all that kind of stuff, and then all of a sudden, they got the word from their provincial, whoever they were listening to, whoever their, your bo they, they worked for the Vatican, but whoever their boss was, they said, okay, do it now. Do it now. And they do it. Okay? That's what they do. They come into what? To spy out our liberty. They come to see what actually saved people are like and what interactions saved people have with themselves. They go there to study, to, to learn your ways so that they can become more believable in the facade that they put on, uh, put on as being of the Church of the Living God. See, okay? False brethren brought in unawares. To, who came into privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus. Why? That they might bring us into bondage. And see, false converts, false converts like the one who uh, my brother encountered, they call true faith that was once delivered unto the, uh, unto the saints. They call the true faith bondage. But that religion that Satan is offering through the Christians in the church buildings. Oh, that's, that's liberty, isn't it? Wow, huh? That's what, that's what these infiltrators do. See, an infiltrator is exactly that. They're fake. They come in to infiltrate, to spies, and to bring people under bondage. Okay? Usually under the, to bring them back under the headship of the Vatican in one form or another. Okay? But they come in first, they're spies. They're spies. And they, you know, they're usually real friendly too at first. But then whenever they get the cue, whoop! Okay? And, and now go to Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 5. Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? See, they come in, an infiltrator comes in as a spy, to spy out our liberty. 
He comes in to try to worm himself into your little fellowship, uh, your little whatever you have with you and your brethren or your sisters or whatever. Okay? They try to worm in to spy, to see how fellowship between saved people actually is. And then they wait. Then they wait. And they deviate in little areas. It's like, and, uh, you know, they question people. It's like, well, I don't know if so-and-so is saved. I don't know if he's saved. He's teaching this. Oh, wow. Mm. Rather than having an open discussion amongst the brethren with it. No, they go and whisper. Try to turn brethren against each other. There's a, uh, one guy who I used to think was saved um, who is really good at that. Who, who wants to turn everybody against each other. And for the most part, a lot of the people that he fingered were accurate. Yeah, because he himself was not. Hmm. The, what is it, the saying, the kettle calling the, uh, the spade calling the kettle black or something like that? Yeah. But see, the infiltrator comes in, number one, to spy, and to what? Also, they bewitch. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth? Before whom eyes, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Meaning, he's like, okay, I have given you an example by what I spake, what I taught and preached, and how I lived according to what I taught, spake, and preached. And yet some guy comes in privily to spy out our liberty and says, hey, so and so, he, he, he's, there's something off on him that you just Look at him. There's something wrong with him. And Paul's like, look, I, I've lived as I've lived my I've walked my talk. I've lived as someone of the church of the living God. Meaning the uh, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath even, hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Okay? This only what I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Now, when he says works of the law, he's talking about the law of Moses, obviously. But you've got to remember, what is Antichrist? To be against and to replace. What law? Oh, you, you, got, the, uh, you got the Talmud. I don't have a Talmud. But you got the law of the rabbis taught in the Talmud. You got the Catechism, the Law of Catholics. You got the secret, the Law of Attraction, as taught by Joel Osteen and a lot of these charismatic nitwits. Hmm? What law? Now granted, he's talking about the works of the law. And what he is referring to specifically is the Law of Moses talking about Judaizers. But what is Antichrist? To replace to replace, and is also to be against. Okay? So, there are those calling themselves Jews and are not. Catholics don't say that they are Jews. No, they don't. But, they teach that they have replaced Israel as the apple of God's eye. Replacement theology. Hence, they're saying that they're God's chosen people. And they are the little G-God of this world. Ch uh, world's chosen people, yes. But the God of the Scripture? Of course not. So, this only what I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit of the the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? By keeping the law of Moses? By keeping the catechism? By doing what the Talmud says? The law of discipline by the Methodists? Uh, following the institutes of the Christian religion by Calvin? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, this only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? Verse 5. He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? And see, the infiltrator comes in to spy, and to bewitch, and dazzle you with signs and wonders kinds of things, and they impress upon you works of the law. 
whatever those, that law is that they are want to get you under, to bring you under bondage, see? Okay? Okay? And now go to Galatians chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 11. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God. Now see, now hold on right there. God knows who every single solitary person, spirit, soul, and body is on earth. The known of God talks about what? Having a personal relationship with him. God knows who you are, lost person, whoever you are. God knows who you are, but he doesn't know you as a personal, intimate relationship with him. Okay? That's what that's talking about. But now after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, through a personal relationship, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Because the law made nothing perfect. There, there wasn't a law that could bring righteousness, life. Okay? Ye observe days and months and times and years. See, and verse 10 is making reference onto Judaizers, okay? But look at Catholicism. Look at Catholicism and all their fasts and all their uh, feasts that they have instituted and all their holy days. Yeah. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. And what are we reading to here? Uh, what are we reading to? Oh, verse 11. Yes. I am afraid of you lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Now skip down to verses 17 on to verse 20. They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you, that ye might affect them. Ooh, that ye might affect them. Mm. Making one proselyte, and making them twofold more the child of hell than them themselves. They glory in your flesh because the infiltrator comes in, number one, to spy. Number two, to bewitch and to cause confusion, to cause strife among brethren. Did you read that in the proverb today, proverb chapter six? Hmm? He that soweth discord among brethren, that's what an infiltrator does. Okay? They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. Well, hey, he, he's, he's right. And all, all the others are wrong. And it's like, he's got his stuff together. They cause division. I am for Paul. I am for Apollos. I am of Kephas and that kind of thing. Okay? But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you, I desire to be present with you now, and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. See, a babe, a novice, can be led away by an infiltrator. But if someone is of the church of the living God, truly saved, born again, converted, that spirit that lives with them, God, you know, Christ formed in you, okay, Christ is in you if you are truly saved, Christ in you is going to open your eyes, unless you want to quench the spirit and give your life over to the flesh, so that eventually if you are saved, the Lord's going to kill you, that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. But if you are saved, God's not going to let you be in heresy for too long. God is not going to allow you to be deceived for too long. Now remember, he doesn't do things by gunpoint, but he's going to make things plainly obvious for you. Okay? Again. How can someone who claims to be saved find pleasure and joy in being around lost people? How can you have fellowship with the lost? I don't understand that. I don't understand that. I, I, I don't. I don't. And you got to remember about infiltrators. Okay, go to Jude. Jude. Okay. You got to remember about infiltrators. 
Jude, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And then skip down to verses 10 on to verse 13. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them! For they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, <laughs> feeding themselves without fear, clouds are clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, whispers, you know, shh, hey, guess what about the so-and-so? Yeah. Trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. And these people who infiltrate, these infiltrators, uh, no, quite a few of them. What is the fruit that they are causing? Look at their fruit. What is their fruit? Are they turning people on to the Lord Jesus Christ of the Scriptures? No. They're causing division. They're causing strife. They're causing debate. Because all they do is attack. They, they are incapable of uh, teaching anything. And if they teach something, they're getting it from their mentor who is giving them their own material, which is nothing in itself as, at all either. Very, very, very useless. Useless. Their use is only to cause division. That's all their, their fruit. Look at their fruit. Look at their fruit. This young infiltrator, a Jesuit want to be. Okay? Um, what's his fruit? What's his fruit? Has the Lord led uh, you uh, to guide someone onto himself? Hmm? Has he used you as his vessel to guide someone onto him? Hmm? No. No. What about your mentor? <laughs> yeah. 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 Raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. <laughs> yeah. Who is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And verse 16 in Jude. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words. Having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. <laughs> these uh, uh, these infiltra uh, infiltrators, coadjutors working for the Vatican. Um, for example, um, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. They'll go after guy. They'll they'll try to align themselves with people who have attacked me, who they themselves hate. But they'll, they'll try to use, go to his side to make it look like they're on his side. See? <laughs> the, 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 these infiltrators are nothing but whores. You're a whore, you infiltrators. You're a whore. <laughs> That's all you are. You're a whore. You'll do whatever you got to do to get what you got to get done. You'll do whatever you got to do. It doesn't matter. There's no shame. There's no shame. There's nothing off limits for you. <laughs> They're whores. Infiltrators are whores. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 5. Verses 1 under verse 6. An infiltrator. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. Her mouth is smoother than oil. Smoother than oil. Hence, the inf infiltrator sent by the enemy to spy, to bewitch, 
to cause strife and division and debate, to separate brethren, to cause division between brethren, to start rumors, okay? But they come in. Their mouth is smoother than oil. And a strange woman, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, working for the Vatican in one form or another. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. And here it is for the infiltrator. Okay? Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Hence, the infiltrator. There, one day, their their uh, easy believism, then they go to and follow his holiness at Maine. And then they go away from him. And then they're just doing whatever they're doing, attacking everybody, trying to establish their own thing. Mm -hmm. Their ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Mm -hmm. Especially an older infiltrator who uh, his ways are movable. Well, and they are adept. They are chameleons. They'll put on whatever facade they got to do because the end justifies the means. They say, oh, there we wouldn't do that. But yet again, when they are uh, found out or they are made angry, they'll do exactly the contrary to what they have earlier boast about. Oh, I would never do such a thing. Yeah. See, the infiltrator, the infiltrator makes false converts. While the infiltrator himself could be a false convert. And false converts also make other false converts. But see, the infiltrator, the infiltrator, who is not of the church of the living God to begin with, worm his way in to try to draw disciples after himself. Um, go to Proverbs chapter 7. Now, we, like I said, we've covered this before, and recently we're going to cover it again. Okay? Because you got to remember, you got to remember, there are a lot of infiltrators out there working for the Vatican, putting on the facade that they are of the church of the living God. They call themselves Christians. They call themselves Christians. A worldly term used by the world and lost people to describe us of the church of the living God, which we never called ourselves that. And oh, the false converts that these infiltrators have made. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10 on verse 21. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have de Now see, they do religious works that look appealing. That look appealing. And Satan, you know, oh, yea, hath God said, you won't eat of the, uh, don't eat of the fruit of the tree. You will not surely die if you do that. God knows the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be open and you shall know, be as God's, knowing good and evil. And then Eve saw it as, wow, it's pleasant to the eyes. It's good for food. And it can make me wise. Yeah, yeah. So she caught him and kissed him. And with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him, and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. And flattery. Oh, yeah. Flattery. 
The infiltrator. Infiltrator comes in to what? As a spy. Spy out our liberty. And he comes also as what? Okay? To cause division. To bewitch. To bewitch. To sow discord among brethren. Okay? Their ways are movable. They're wishy-washy. They're one thing one day, and another day, there's something else. They're unstable. The only thing that they are stable in is their evil. Okay? That's the only consistency that the infiltrator has. Okay? All right? But now, go to Acts 20. Check this out. Check this out. And here, we work in to the false convert. Okay? Infiltrators make false converts. Infiltra infiltrators usually themselves are false converts. And the infiltrator and the false convert all have this one thing in common. That they're all about flesh. That they're all about glorifying themselves. It's all about man. And what did the Lord say of Satan? For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. Okay? Go to Acts 20, verses 28 down to verse 30. Paul, warning the disciples about things to come. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the Christians, oh, excuse me, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his blood. See, Christ Jesus died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he shed his blood to make an atonement for sin. Salvation is there to be had. It is a gift. But you have to go to him on his terms, not your own. And his terms are brokenness, contrition, and in fear of him you call upon his name. It's actually very simple. Okay? But so many out there want to boot the door out of the way and shout through the crack their heresy. Okay? So many want to do that. Okay? But if you are purchased, that means you are bought. So while the way of salvation is made plain for all, and salvation is there for all, not everybody is going to be saved. Not everybody is going to come to the Lord on his terms and be saved by his grace through faith. Okay? So those who are saved are those that are who are actually purchased. Right? Now check this out. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Infiltrators shall come in. Grievous wolves, infiltrators, okay? Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Hmm. Of your own selves. Now, check this out. Check this out. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Check this out. I want to run this by you. Philippians chapter 2, verse 21. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. Self-seeking, self-serving, rather than Christ-dependent. Okay? And what we just saw in Acts chapter 20, verse 30, okay? Look at that verse. Also of your own selves shall men arise, Speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. And then Philippians chapter 2, verse 21. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. Hmm. Hmm. Go to 2 Peter chapter 2. And one verse in 2 Peter chapter 2. One verse. One verse. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people. Okay? Infiltrators coming in. Okay? Even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily 
shall bring in damnable heresies. Look at this. Even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Wow. Do you see that? Okay. Now, Paul warned in Acts chapter 20, verse 30, And also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. And Peter says here, As there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. Hmm. Denying the Lord that bought them. Is someone who is someone who is not saved, are they a purchased possession? No, they're not, are they? They're not. So what is Peter talking about? What did Paul warn about? That there could be in the last days actually saved people who get messed up in heresy? And will turn people away from truth? Themselves being saved? But look what this says. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. And like Paul said, uh, he handed these certain people over to Satan so that they would learn not to blaspheme. And our Lord says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5, To hand such a one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. What does this show us? That yes, there are those who are, are actually saved, who can get messed up in teaching heresy, and even bringing in damnable heresy, but yet, they're saved. Really, yeah. But see, this tells us, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. If you are saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, and you get messed up in heresy, God is going to chasten you, God is going to correct you, and God is going to bring you back onto the truth. But not at gunpoint. If you're going to resist and be stubborn and refuse it, God will kill you. God will kill you. Hand such a one over to, uh, to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Uh, more on this, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, okay? And see, I personally believe that that is the few. I do believe there are some saved people out there who are just bogged down in heresy and their lives are nothing. And they're on the brink of destruction. The, the majority of, uh, of that are out there, of course, are the infiltrators, but mostly the false converts. Okay? But, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. Uh, let's read verse 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So, denying the Lord that bought them? Yes. There will be saved people. There will be saved people. Who will bring upon themselves swift destruction. Destruction of the flesh. Their swift death. Because they refuse the correction. They refuse the Lord. And the Lord will silence those people quite quickly. But see, that is possible. But the majority of these people that are today are the Jesuit coadjutors. Teaching people false prophets and making false converts. Why? Because they're preaching another gospel and another Jesus. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1. Okay, bought with a price. Okay, we are bought with a price. And what was the price that we were bought with? 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 under verse 21. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, 
but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith might hope, and uh, that your faith and hope might be in God, and not in men. Okay? And also you gotta remember this. You also gotta remember this. First uh first John chapter two. First John chapter two. Verses 18 under verse 20. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Hmm. Now see, someone who is saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, who gets messed up in heresy, okay, God is going to brutally correct and chasten that individual. And if they will not receive correction, they're a goner. Okay? They're a goner. But see, there will be those, this is talking about the infiltrator and the false convert. Okay? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye, who are truly saved, born again, converted, have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. And that unction is the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit that dwells within you. See? And see, like I said, the infiltrator comes in to spy and to bewitch and to cause division and to bring people under bondage. Okay? And the infiltrator who will who runs to the front to be the teacher, to be a leader, to separate himself, that he may draw people after them, after himself. Okay? They make false converts. While a lot of them are themselves false converts. But okay? And when it comes to a false convert, false convert. What are the differences really between an infiltrator and a false convert? Well, like I like I explained to you, the that young man who is an infiltrator, a Jesuit wannabe, you know, comes in to, and wants to interject himself, has no desire for the truth, but is all about attack and all about this, no edification, no instruction, no nothing, okay? Just there to cause problems, okay? But a false convert, there's a man who I know of who is actually feeble-minded, and who has claimed that he had called on the name of the Lord uh, hundreds of times, but wasn't saved until he just believed. And he himself is a false convert. Not necessarily looking to infiltrate, but, but, he is a false convert. Why? Because he's accepted a false gospel and another Jesus and saved himself by his own belief. Okay? A false convert can be an infiltrator, absolutely. But the infiltrator is there just to infiltrate, spy, and to drop dirty bombs and to cause all kinds of problems. While false converts can do the same thing, but false converts usually are not there seeking to worm their way in. Usually. that They do. Don't get me wrong. They do. Like this individual that my brother in ha uh, encountered. You know, this individual wasn't trying to worm... Um, themselves into anything. It's just a false convert because they don't believe on the true God of the scriptures. Well, and they actually read the scriptures. But they're not saved. But a good way to describe to you a false convert is 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 under verse 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unholy, unthankful, unholy. Right there. 
For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Lovers of their own selves. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Want well, to look at a really good scriptural example of a false convert? Go to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Here's a really good example of a false convert. Acts chapter 8, verses 13 on to verse 24. Shimon the sorcerer, who was dethroned when Jesus came to town through Philip, preaching the true gospel. And then people believed the gospel that Philip preached. And the Shimon was jealous, thinking only about himself. Verse 13. Then Shimon himself believed also. He believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. So he believed and he was baptized. And easy believism heretics say that Shimon was saved. He wasn't saved. He was a false convert. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Shimon, check this out, saw that through laying on of the hand of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. He offered them money because, number one, he didn't have the Holy Ghost. And number two, all seek their own, not the things of Jesus Christ. He wanted the Holy Ghost for his own benefit so he could reclaim his power as a great one. He went after the Lord because he was filled, you know, because his belly was filled, but not because he saw the miracle of the loaves. He sought the Lord only for what could benefit him, not because of seeking the Lord for who he is, but sought, him, sought it for only himself to magnify himself. See? At least with the infiltrator, they're seeking to uh, glorify the little G God of this world, Satan, right? And anyone who is self-serving is serving Satan. Okay? Okay? But see, the false convert, the false convert, their God is their belly. See, most infiltrators, most infiltrators know what they're doing. They know that they're lost. They know that they're serving Satan. Most do. Most do. Yeah. Most infiltrators who preach contrary to the gospel aren't ignorant of the true gospel. Because in order to preach truly against the true gospel, you got to know at least what the true gospel is. You got to know by worming your way in and being around people who are actually saved and observing them to know what the truth is in order to effectually deceive others. Okay? Be aware of that. There is no, they're not innocent. Someone could be a false convert ignorantly because you got to remember, Christians are ignorant. Christians, people, are ignorant. How, what are Christians led by today? A Bible that teaches another Jesus. What are Christians led by? Their feelings. Their feelings. Okay? Christians are ignorant. They don't have the scriptures. And if they have the scriptures, they don't believe the scriptures. They don't believe the scriptures. 
Wow. Christians are ignorant. But yet, knowledge is increasing, right? Let's continue. Let's read verse 18 again. And when Shimon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Thy heart is not right. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And then verse 24 proves to you that this man wasn't saved. Okay, If this man were truly saved, he would go to the Lord himself. He would go to the Lord. It's like, wow, Lord. Okay, Sh shoo, me where I'm shoo me where I'm wrong. Help me. I need to be right with you. But what does he do? Then answered Shimon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Perfect example of a false convert. Perfect example. Now, there are many things that make a false convert. Okay? For, like I told you, Christians are ignorant. Okay? The Bibles speak against the redemption of the purchased possession. The Bibles tell you that you are being saved. The Bibles tell you that Christians are going through the great tribulation. Okay? The Bibles don't tell you to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? So, someone could be a false convert in ignorance, not knowing the truth. But see, when they are told the truth, what do they do with that truth? What do you do when you are rebuked? How do you handle a rebuke? How do you handle correction? Hmm? How do you handle the truth when it's jammed in your face? What do you do with it? That's a very telling thing. What do you do with the truth? What do you do with the truth? Hmm? Fight it? Oh, you can fight it, sure. But see, if you're saved, born again, converted, sooner or later you're going to accede to that truth or... The Lord's going to destroy you. Okay? Got to be aware of that. But what does someone do with the truth? How do they handle a rebuke? And see, when a false convert is made aware that, oh, you mean me just believing without any scriptural repentance? Me just believing I'm not truly saved? No, you're not. What? Does that prick the heart? Like in Acts chapter 2? Where they say, uh, oh, uh, okay, whoa, what do I got to do? What, what, what? The false convert who gets cut to the heart. What do they do? They stop their ears and they gnash on the teeth. Gnash with their teeth. What do they do with the truth? It's very telling. Okay? But there are three main things. Three main. There are many also. If someone who is aware of the truth of, for example, the redemption of the purchased possession and teaching contrary to the redemption of the purchased possession, false. False convert. They know the truth. They know what the scriptures teach and reject it. False convert. They're lost. Okay? Someone who preaches against rightly dividing the word of truth and preaches against it while using the scriptures like the new IFB guys, lost. Okay? Lost. They know the truth, but they preach against the truth. Okay? Lost. They're not ignorant. Okay? But in a basic, in a basic sense, we're going to just look at three things, okay? Like I said, if someone is ignorant, if someone is ignorant, that's a different thing. 
And you, if you make them aware, okay, they know the truth. What do they do with that truth? How do they handle that truth? Do they accede to it or fight it? That's the, that tells you something. But there again, at the, at the core, we're going to look at three main things of a false convert. Three main things. We already looked and went over, and there will be in the description box, things about the infiltrator. But we're going to look at three, for, uh, three things about the false convert. First and foremost, number one, there is no new creature. Oh, oh, you can change the way you look. You can get rid of certain things in your life. But is there, an, are you a new creature? Huh? Are you a new creature? Many people, can, you can have a changed life, but are you a new creature? Huh? Are you the same old man that you were just now? You look different. Huh? Oh. At number one, no new creature. Number one. Number one, you shall know them by their fruits. Okay? If a brother or a sister rebuke you and correct you with truth and show you the truth, what do you do with it? I've had people rebuke me quite often. It's like, Brad, can I show you in Scripture? This is where you are wrong. Okay? It's like, oh boy. Oh boy. And what do you do with that truth? You accede to it. You admit your fault. It's like, hey, I was wrong. I was wrong. I've made many mistakes. You can see them too. You search the channel. Okay? I've been rebuked plenty of times. Okay? And I accede to the truth. Because what is the ultimate source of truth? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word of tr is truth. This, the love of the truth, the scriptures, is what decides it. A love of the truth is what binds we of the church of the living God together. The coadjutors and the false converts out there, what binds them together? Hate. Love of flesh and hate of the truth. That's what binds them together. The false. The infiltrator and the false. What binds the true together? Scriptures. I can have a disagreement with a brother or a sister. Vice versa. What say it the scriptures? Because the scriptures is what decides it. The scriptures, not our feelings. But see, a false convert, whose God is their belly. Yeah, you can put on, you can change the way you look, but are you truly a new person? Huh? Are you truly a new person? Are you? Or has just the old been made to look different? Which one is it? You know why? No new creature. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Okay? New creature. Now, the change, the result of being a new creature, that takes time. Doesn't happen like that. Some things do happen like that, but it's a process. I've been saved for 14 years only. And still, it's a process of sanctification, of getting things out of your life. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, it's a process of sanctification. But if you said, you, if you're saying you've been saved for over 25 years, and God doesn't want me to live in a coffin, <laughs> or the proverbial, don't judge me. <laughs> yeah yeah are you a new creature or has just the the old been polished up to look like something new without there being something new on the inside yeah yeah uh, on that Matthew chapter 23 Matthew chapter 23 Matthew chapter 23 
which is before <laughs> Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 is about what? You want to know this? It's about the time of Jacob's trouble. And Matthew chapter 25 is talking about those coming out of the time of Jacob's trouble going into the kingdom of heaven. But Matthew chapter 23 is talking about the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Matthew chapter 23, verse 5 to start. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries. See, brother? And enlarge the borders of their garments. Ah. To be seen of men. To put on that facade. <laughs> yeah. And, and let's skip a little to verses 25 on verse 28. Okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within, but within, they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee. What is a Pharisee? Someone who elevates tradition above scripture. Catholic. The um, false Jude uh, Judaizers in Israel that follow the Talmud, not scriptural Judaism, because if they followed scriptural Judaism, they would be of the church of the living God. Not a Christian. They would be of the church of the living God. Okay? Talk to us, uh, honestly, truly saved, born again, converted Jew. Okay? You'll understand the disdain that we as the church of God ought to have for the term Christian. Okay? Give me a break. But, I might. Okay? Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. How many times have I personally come across people who, I've mentioned this, but you know, about the women thing, you know, about these fine looking women, they look beautiful, but on the inside they look like a turd. It's what's on the inside that ought to make the outside beautiful. But see, the false convert. They put on that facade, just like the infiltrator does. Okay? The, the, the similarities between the infiltrator and the false convert are, are profound. Yes, yes, yes. But you got to remember, the infiltrator has the, is there sent for the express purpose of well, well, we'll get at that for in a second, but let's... But to steal and destroy. They're thieves. They boot the door, and the door is Jesus Christ. They boot the door out of the way to climb up some other way. They're thieves and robbers. They don't care for the flock. Okay? That's John chapter 10. But let's really finish this. Yes. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. And see, that's what a lot of the false converts do. They make the outside they put on the they put on it's the theater okay it's the theater that's what it is it's the theater they're putting on a show man they're putting on a show why there's no new creature there's no true brokenness there's no you know the individual that um my brother encountered i bet you if you asked don't because it already caused you so much trouble. I bet you if you asked, how were you saved? How were you saved? I bet you, I bet you they say, when I believed. What about his grace for faith? What about coming broken? I bet you, I bet you. One second. Okay. 
beg your pardon, had uh, you know, chap lips here. Uh, John chapter 10. John chapter 10. See, the infiltrator is the thief. Okay? John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Yes, John chapter 10. Verses 1 under verse 5. Okay? John chapter 10, verses 1 under verse 5. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a, and a robber. The door is Jesus Christ. What in the name of Chalais are you doing booting the door out of the way and shouting through the crack? You're a thief and a robber. See? That's what the infiltrator does. Okay? But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth, for, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Hmm. Because you'll be listening to somebody. It's like, there's something off there. Something off. Then you'll go away for a while. And then sooner or later, the Lord will reveal it to you. Okay? About an infiltrator. Someone who's there just to cause... Verse 10? Uh, verses 9... Uh, uh, verses 7 on to verse 10. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 9 is the first reference, uh, is a reference, excuse me, onto the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Our Lord mentions it there. Verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. And I am come that they might have life, and that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. The thief. Infiltrators are thieves. And it's funny, the false convert will rally people together to come and listen to the infiltrator. And that's something. Okay? But no new creature. No new creature. Number one. And it's shown by their fruit. Why? Because, number two, they are incredibly weak on sin and separation from the world. Incredibly weak on sin and separation from the world. But they're, they're, they're anorexic, non-existent. The only thing that they call sin is when you got someone of the church of the living God preaching the true Christ Jesus of the authorized version of the scriptures, those are the only ones that they go after and hate on. Really. Those are the ones, we are the ones that the false converts say are in sin because we're, we're the ones hating. We're the ones judging because we're teaching the true Christ Jesus of the scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. But see, number one, False convert is not a new creature. Number one. Okay? Now, whether they are in ignorance, that can be handled. That can be rectified. What do they do when they are no longer in ignorance? Okay? There will be videos in the description box dealing with that. Okay? What do they do with that? All right? But, number two, they're weak on sin. Oh, very weak on sin. Romans chapter 1. Verses 20 on to verse 25. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Look at nature. Look at your body. Okay? You are made in the image of God. You have a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? You are not God. 
But you are made in his image. You have a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body. Okay? You're without excuse. You've been reading the authorized version of the scriptures for over 20 years. And you come up with the phrase, God doesn't want me to live in a box or in a coffin. Believe it's not what you read. <laughs> How could you? Because you're not converted. You're not saved. You're not a new creature. You've just like a t-shirt or a dress or whatever have just changed the outside and there's no inner conversion. Because that when they knew God, right here, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was dark and Confessing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up unto up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Themselves or Satan. And if you are self-serving, you are serving the devil. And of course, Romans chapter 2, verses 5 on to verse 11. Yeah. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, not willing to kneel, not willing to submit. Treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. <laughs> those who are the only ones you think are saved are those who you and your friends think are saved. What say the scriptures? This tells you who is truly saved and who is not. This is the standard. Oh, oh, but the, the authorized version is the is the best translation, but not God's perfect and errant, given by inspiration, word of God, right? No, you say that the Greek and the Hebrew, the, the Greek and the Hebrew are inferior to the authorized version of the scriptures. Oh, oh, heresy, right? Yeah, right. No, the Greek and the Hebrew were stepping stones to arrive at the finished product, the Word of God in English. Oh, they never, well, what about other languages? Use the authorized version. Use the authorized version to translate into other languages. You're saying they got to learn English. You are saying they got to learn Koine Greek and scriptural Hebrew. <laughs> How far do you want to go with that one, huh, buddy? Huh? Come on. Yeah, I've got set. You know, hey, if you ever run out of toilet paper, by the way, you know that $100,000 piece of paper you got on your wall that you got from the Jesuits, Mr. Bible Scholar? Uh, you can go ahead and, you know, you run out of to toilet paper, you go ahead and wipe your rear end with that. Because that's what that uh, little piece of paper that you paid $100,000 for at a Jesuit cemetery school. I went to Dallas, Sem uh, Sa uh, Dallas Theological Cemetery School. Run by Jesuits. <laughs> run by Jesuits. Yeah. Yeah. You went to Satan to learn what God has said. And you have no idea what God has said. And that's something. Isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah. Forgive me for that little rabbit trail. Okay. Yes. But after thy hardness and impetient heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuing in continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life, but unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness. 
indignation and wrath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good. And there is none good but what? But who? God. Okay? But, on, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God unless you're one of those special people to whom God appeared to. And you accused me of being uh, in pride. Wow. Wow. Okay. And, and of course, Romans chapter 3 now. Romans chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 8. But God's grace, you know, you don't, don't worry about sin. Don't worry about sin. Uh, somebody sent me a link to this uh, individual. Um, I, I, got your, uh, I got your email, by the way, dear friend. I did. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> yeah, who has a problem, you know, uh, this channel was, we're, we're a channel here for those who have a problem with the church, meaning the church building. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, you know, Christianity, so you don't have a sin problem. You have a life problem. We need life, okay? And hey, some preach, uh, the more devilment, the, the, the more you mess up, the greater the grace is. So the more blessings you will receive. Some people actually teach that, do you know? You know, it's, it's tied with easy believism. See, easy believism because you just believe. Uh, yeah, yeah, you should abstain from all appearance but from evil, but don't worry. God's grace covers it all. You're you're once saved, always saved. They get that right. But the premise, you're saved because you just believe. Without any brokenness. They skip right over repentance. Brokenness. You know, and they hate calling it. We've talked about that before. But uh, yeah. 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 And See, they link that. Well, don't worry about sin. Don't worry about it. You're going to heaven. Shouldn't you? No, you shouldn't. But hey, don't worry about it. Hey, we all need we we all need to live our lives, right? God wants you to enjoy things. So yeah, sure. Go ahead. Watch TV. Go ahead. Go ahead. Fight with your husband. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Accuse your wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Dress like the world. Listen to contemporary Christian music. Yeah. Mingle yourself in there. Blur distinction. Because God's grace covers it all, right? And hey, the more you mess up, the more chance, the more chance for God's grace you get. You know, Calvinism is heresy, but at least the Calvinists would be like, are you crazy? Calvinists are, you know, they teach election, non-elect and non-elect and non-elect. You know, they're heretics. Uh, but, you know, they at least would be like, what, do evil that good may come? you crazy. Even they would. At least they would, you know. But there are people out there that actually teach that. That say, in, like in Romans chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 8. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. Let us do evil that good may come. Don't worry about sin. But shouldn't I? That, that, don't worry about it. You you just believe, right? Well, yeah, you're saved. Yeah, yeah, you 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 shouldn't be doing that stuff. But don't worry about it. Go on, go on. Don't don't bother yourself with trying to align your life with the scriptures and abstain from all appearance from evil. No, but you know what you gotta watch out for? Yeah, and you you really wanna, you know, get 
watch out for these guys who, who are calling themselves the Church of the Living God and really adhere to the authorized version of the scriptures and rightly divide it. Okay, watch out for them. Those guys are your, those are the bad guys. You got to watch out for them. Those are, those are the haters. Therefore, you hate them. Yeah. Yeah. See, Christianity, these Christians today, Christianity, they say to be of the world to win the world. And in John, 1 John chapter 2 again, verses 15 on to verse 17, okay? You all know this, but you need to be reminded of it. You need to be reminded of it. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 17, Love not the world, neither the things of the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes. That fruit on that tree looked good, it was desirable for food and to make one wise. Go ahead, live it up. Yeah. Yeah. And see, Romans chapter 6 deals with these heretics. It's like, God, don't worry about your sin. God's grace covers it all. Okay? In Romans chapter 6, okay? Romans chapter 6, verse 15. What then? Uh, verses 15 on to verse 23. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God's grace covers it all. Don't worry about it. God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? Hmm. But God be thanks that ye were the servants of sin. Notice it doesn't say slaves, like what Mr. John MacArthur wants you to believe. See, putting, taking servant and putting in slave there, and slave does appear in the scriptures twice. It does, okay? But um, putting slave for servant there, that removes choice because the slave has no free will, does he? Yeah, yeah. Remember, God ain't forcing you to do anything by gunpoint, and neither is the devil. Okay, remember that. Okay? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. How... how? How could you mingle yourself in worldly things and have no shame? Now, now yes, we, you know, we're, we're going to address this, uh, what Paul said about this. Yes, we are in the world, not of the world. Yes, we have to deal with people of the world. Yes, we do. Why? Because we're ambassadors for Christ. But when you decide to play, uh, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, right? How do you have no shame in that? How do you have no shame in that? I don't understand. How can you how can you have fellowship with lost people? I don't understand that. I don't. I don't. You know, choosing the lost over being with brethren. I don't understand. It makes no sense. It only makes sense that you're not truly saved. You're not a true convert to our Lord Jesus Christ. Not at all. Yes. Verse 21. 
What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And this is not talking about sinless perfection. You have a choice. You're not being held at gunpoint by either or. You have to make the right choices. And for you to say, well, don't worry about sin. <laughs> don't worry about looking like the world. Because God's grace covers it all. What then? Shall we, can, shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. And then the opposite to that is when someone is first saved, you know, verses 1 on to verse 6 in Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer Live any longer therein. Okay? When you are saved, truly saved, born again, converted, God lives within you. And they're going to, he's going to make you a new creature. Okay? We, we already looked at that. Okay? But see, making you a new creature and that change that will come from being a new, new creature is not a force. You have to make the right decision. Okay? God is not going to force you to do His will. Okay? He's not. He is not. Okay? It's just not going to happen. Okay? If you don't do His will, oh boy, you're going to pay a heavy price for it. And you're going to make Him look bad in the process. Okay? But, okay? You're newly saved. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? See, verse 1 and verse 15 are not asking the same question. Okay? They're asking a different question under different circumstances. Okay? It might, you might say, well, they're asking the same question. No. They're two different questions under two different circumstances. Okay? The new convert. Okay? You're saved. Praise the Lord. Here. Learn how our Lord wants you to live for today during this dispensation. Learn what he says not to do. Okay? God doesn't save you just so to then leave you to your own devices. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. He, he, he gives you his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. He lives within you. The spirit of truth will lead you, guide you into all truth. He will teach you what you need to know. Okay? All right? But then, okay, you're saved. And then you got someone come along, it's like, you know, hey, don't worry, you're not under the law, we're under grace. So, hey, live it up. Live it up. Verse 15 is talking about those who have been walking with the Lord. See, verse 1 is talking about the new convert. Verse 15 is for those who come along, it's like, well, hey. It's like, you, because you realize quickly, it's like, wow, I can't do this perfectly. That's what Romans chapter 7 is about. And then verse 15 talks about those, it's like, well, hey, don't worry, you're safe. Don't worry about it. God's grace covers it all. Don't beat yourself up. Okay? You see the difference between the two? Now let's continue. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Like that as like, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Talking about, he's making reference about putting on the new man. Okay? When the Lord saves you, you are a new creature. Why? Because you are no longer the property of the world. You are bought with a price. Okay? You belong to the Lord and he seals you. He lives within you. Okay? You don't belong to that. You belong to him. Okay? And hence, because you belong to him, he's going to show you what to do. Okay? And him showing you what to do. You know what that curtails? 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 
verses 14 on to verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So, God doesn't save you to have you to remain in that cesspool that you called your life before he saved you. Okay? He doesn't. And see, the false convert. Okay? Number one, there's no new creature. And number two, because they're not a new creature, they're very weak on sin. They, what the false convert calls sin, is someone telling them of their sin. Is They call sin someone saying, separation from the world not to be like the world not to dress like the world to look like the world to act like the world okay to hey if your brother or your sister by blood are lost don't be around them oh but i gotta be around my family hmm. see they call someone who preaches separation distinction they call that sin and number three you know what they hate the most? Judgment. Again, like I, we discussed in the last video. You know, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Okay? Like we discussed in the previous video. Uh, yeah, this is kind of a continuation of the previous video. Okay? Of uh, Jesuit, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, United uh, States of the Jesuits or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, the false convert. Judge not that ye be not judged. Don't judge. And, you know, when you read the entirety of the chapter of Matthew chapter 7, which is for the kingdom of heaven, it's all about judgment. Somehow they missed that. Because like we said in the last video, they use don't judge as a defensive measure. But they're willing to judge you, Church of the Living God, for telling them the truth and uh, making them aware of their sin. Yeah. Yeah. But see, we are to judge. We are to judge. Okay? Because if you don't judge, how are you to know what is truth? That's when you go to people like uh, Bible is Mark of the Beast, so them to tell you. Right? No. First uh, Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 under verse 5. Dare any of you have a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goeth to law with brother. And that before the unbelievers. Hmm. Going to Satan for judgment going to unbelievers, finding comfort from the world, Satan, joy from the world, Satan, judgment from the world and Satan. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 31 on to verse 32. And, and here's where it gets at. 
For if we would judge ourselves. See, the judgment that's being talked about in Matthew chapter 7 and also in Romans chapter 2 is about hypocritical judgment, which we've talked, I talked about in the previous video. Okay? Again, the example. If I were continuing, continuing in sodomy and preaching to you against sodomy, that would be hypocritical judgment. I wouldn't, I'm, I'd be a hypocrite. Okay? That's the type of judgment. But see, false converts, when they say don't judge, it's when they get fingered on their sin. And they say you're judging. You're judging. Amen. But see, for if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Examine yourself. How do you judge yourself? The scriptures. Read the Pauline epistles, which is doctrine for us specifically for us today. Okay? Read that. Okay? Read the scriptures. You judge your life according to the scriptures. What's pertinent for us in this dispensation and for our instruction in righteousness that we can learn from things of the Old Testament. But you judge yourself. If we were, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. But when we are judged, see, if the Lord, see, if we would judge ourselves, the Lord wouldn't step in to judge us. But see, if we are being disobedient and not adhering our lives to the scriptures as we ought, oh, he steps in because why? We're not, we're, because why? Why? Because of 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Because of 2 Corinthians verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Self-examination. Self-examination, self which is something that I do daily and that I preach unto you. And see, a false convert doesn't want to examine themselves. Because if a false convert exa truly examined themselves, if they judged themselves, and see, if the Lord will send us to the church of the living God to make you false converts aware of your sin. But see, because you won't judge yourselves. Why? Why won't you judge yourselves? Hmm? Ooh. Well, in John chapter 7, verse 24, John chapter 7, verse 24, our Lord even tells us, just one verse, uh, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Righteous judgment, according to the scriptures. But see, what's the problem with these false converts? Who were made false converts by infiltrators. Infiltrators themselves being false converts. And a, yes, a false convert could be an infiltrator. Yes, yes, yes. But these are the two types that we are dealing with. The infiltrators, which are all over YouTube, and the false converts, okay? But what is it with these uh, false converts? Oh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses tw uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 16. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The Spirit of God that is within you, comparing spiritual things with the Scriptures, spiritual things. False converts. False converts that actually read the Scriptures. There are things that you can get from the Scriptures being lost that are obvious, you know, the real can come from the false. Yes, there are many out there who can preach real good sermons, but they themselves are lost. Why? Because the scriptures speak for themselves. Okay? But the deeper things of scripture, they can't get. Why? But the natural man receiveth not the things from the Spirit of God. It's capital S, Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost that dwells in them. Why? Because... 
For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The natural man, unregenerate, not saved, not a new creature, still the old man. There are many people who are, who are lost, false converts, that do read the authorized version of the scriptures. But the deeper things of scripture they can't get because they're a natural man still. There are things that anybody, even atheists, who read the scriptures can get. You know, they just skim across the surface. But the deeper things they can't get. Because the spirit of truth is not in them. The capital S spirit of God is not in them. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he, himself, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Why do we have the mind of Christ? Because Christ lives within us. Okay? Christ lives within us, dear friends. And because Christ lives within us, that makes us odious unto the infiltrator and unto the false convert. Haven't you figured it out? Now granted, you could be an absolute jerk. Yes, we have to acknowledge that. That could be part of it, yes. But if you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church and the living God, God within you is contrary to that. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They're going to fight. They're going to fight. Okay? So John chapter 7, verses 30 on to verse 32. <clears throat> John chapter 7, verses 30, on to verse 32. Oh, one second, brother. Yes, John chapter 7, verses 30, on to verse 32. Many people, look, look at this. Then they sought to take him, our Lord Jesus. But no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him. Believed on him. Okay? And said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? See, many people believed on Jesus because they saw what he did. But see, what they lacked, what they lacked, they only saw him for what he gave, not for who he actually was. Hence the false convert. And these same people, these same people, in John chapter 7, in John chapter 7, uh, uh, where, uh, where are we? In John chapter 7, verses 48 on to verse 15. Oh, no, excuse me. That's John chapter 8. Excuse me. John chapter 8, okay? John chapter 8. One second, brethren. Okay. Yes, I beg your pardon. It was John chapter 8 that we were supposed to read. But notice that in John chapter 7, like we already read, verses 30 on to verse 31, we read, uh, then, they thought, then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, when, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? Okay? They saw only what he did. They didn't believe on him for who he actually was. Okay? John chapter 8, which we should have been reading. Beg your pardon, but that worked. Okay? John chapter 8, verses 30 on to verse 32. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Many believed on him. They saw what he did. He said, uh, he said good things. He really did. He was speaking truth. But see... They didn't. They they only believed what they saw. They didn't believe on the man who he actually is, God the Father. Okay. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then when you get to John chapter eight, verses forty-eight on to verse fifty-nine. 
Now these Jews believed on him. And, but yet our Lord's like, wait a minute, you say you believe on me. He put his finger on that one thing that they lacked. They were of their father, the devil. And they were full of pride. They didn't want to believe that who they were speaking to was their actual uh, promised Messiah, their God, their father. But they saw a miracle worker who could make their lives better, but not a God who requires. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast the devil? These are the same people who believed on him, but yet now they're saying that he has a devil. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see of death, and shall never see death. These are the Jews that believed on him. But yet God is a God who requires. See, false converts want to believe that, that their God is a God that requires nothing. Oh, to the contrary. God requires many things. They're simple. But God is a God who does require, dear friend. And see, the false convert, as led by the infiltrator, they want to convince you otherwise. These are the same Jews that believed on him. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast the devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? The same Jews that believed on him saying this to him. See how they turned on him when he put his finger on that one thing of theirs? That little pet sin of theirs? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yeah. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? Now remember, they asked, Who makest thou thyself? Who are you? Okay? They believed on him. And yet, they're like calling him a devil. But yet they believed on him. Because they saw what he did. But this they did not believe. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Now, Jesus did not say, I am God the Father there. No, he did not. He didn't need to. Because all he had to say was, I am. Okay? So, there are people out there who say, where, like there's this one Muslim guy who said, Jesus never said, I am God. He said, I am. It's the same thing. Just the word God is not there. He said he was God. I am. Okay? And I am, of course, what is he saying? Okay? He is saying he, uh, Exodus chapter 3. Okay? Go there really quickly. Hold your place there. Exodus chapter 3, okay? Jesus Christ called himself God. Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. And when Jesus said, in verse 58, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. He just, he just called himself God the Father. To these Jews who believed on him. We looked at uh, chapter 7, which, which was because I wrote it down 7, but I meant 8, which still worked. Many believed on him, yes, yes. But see, these Jews here, like in verse 30, as he spake these words, many believed on him. And these same people that believed on him 
when he put his finger on that one thing that they left. And verse 43, why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Why? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And call them out. You're only believing on me because you saw the miracle of the loaves. You're only believing on me because I, I can do these things. But you're not believing on me because of who I actually am. And he told them who he was. They asked. He, they, and these same Jews that believed on him. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Same Jews that said that they believe on him. I believe in Jesus. But you're, you're of the world. You're worldly. You read a Bible, not the scriptures. You, 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 you're, you speak against... Here, let me tell you about the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, Let me show you about rightly dividing the word of truth. Let me show you that Jesus is God the Father. Okay, Let me show you. You show them. The Lord shows them through you. It's like, you're a liar. You're a hypocrite. You're a, you're a, you're a heretic. No, that's not true. Then they gnash on you with their teeth. And they're ready to stone you. These same people who say, well, I believe in Jesus. You believe in Jesus. The devils also believe and tremble. Yeah. What Jesus do you believe on? The one of the scriptures? Or the one that you've made up in your own head? And the same thing here. He put the finger on that one thing. And the same Jews that believed on him wanted to stone him. Same thing happened with Paul. Okay? In Acts chapter 22, just one verse. Acts chapter 22, verse 22. Okay? Acts chapter 22, verse 22. He was giving the rundown of his conversion to his people, the Hebrews, the Jews. And then there's one thing that Paul says that set these people off. Verse 21 in Acts 22. And he said unto me, saying that Jesus said this unto him, which he did, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. Paul, who is the apostle unto the Gentiles. So Paul, in his defense unto his own people, the Hebrews, said unto his people, the Hebrews, that Jesus said to him to go to be to uh, uh, be sent unto the Gentiles to preach unto the Gentiles. How did they take that? And they gave him audience unto this word. And then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit for him to, that he should live. See, the scriptures and those of the church of the living God who adhere to the scriptures this, the scripture cuts you, okay? I beg your pardon, I got something in my eye. The scriptures cut you, okay? It's Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, okay? That's the, the scriptures cut you. It's Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, okay? <laughs> For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. Soul and spirit. Joints and marrow are part of the body, meaning the whole person. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The scripture shows you who is saved and who is lost. How do you deal with a rebuke? How do you deal with correction? How do they deal with the truth that you give them? Shows a lot. Do they accede to it? Oh, someone who is genuinely saved at first might be like, want to fight it. But see, if they are saved and they hear the truth, they're going to accede. Or 
They're going to rebel unto their own destruction. And when someone rebels unto their own destruction, they become useless unto the Lord. He puts them away. It's like, forget it. You're not going to listen to me? Okay, you're going to go on? Fine. Live it up. It's going to kill you. You're going to die. I'm going to let it kill you. Not going to help you. Go ahead. I'm going to use someone else to do what you, I wanted you to do. See? And of course, you can read in Acts chapter 7, Stephen, when he rebuked them, he stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. What did they do? They were cut to the heart. They stopped their ears and they gnashed on him with their, their teeth. And they killed him. Hence the false convert. When you come around speak, speaking truth to them, oh, they hate judgment. They accuse you of judging. It's like, well, we're supposed to. We're supposed to. We're supposed to judge by the scriptures. Because the scriptures, uh, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints of marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And see, we are to desire to be with one another. And see, this is what we, we talked about earlier, how they, they have a problem with separation. And se uh, they have a problem with being separate from the world. Okay? Because we have the church of the living God, someone who is truly saved. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verses 9 on to verse 16. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Hate the evil and love the good. Anything that is evil, it's against the scriptures. It's evil. Anything that is good comes from the scriptures. Okay? Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. We prefer our own. I prefer to be around those of the church of the living God. I can't be around lost, false converts. And if you're truly saved, neither can you. But if you can be around false converts at, uh, at days on end, hours on end, you need to examine yourself. Something wrong there. We are to be, we are to prefer our own. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Given to hospitality. Hmm. Bless them which per, uh, persecute you. Bless and curse not. How do you bless those who persecute you? By sharing with them the truth. Okay? Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them with weep. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Like-minded. For a long time, I thought I was like-minded with another individual, with several individuals, but it turns out that I wasn't. Because, of course, they, they thought that they saw God. And it's like, how can I be like-minded with someone like that? You know? See, the scriptures is what brings us into agreement and fellowship. Okay? And if you are of the church of the living God, you're going to be like-minded around the scriptures. Okay? And remember uh, Philippians chapter 2 again? We're almost done. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 4. If there be, therefore, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, of if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that he be like-minded. 
How are you going to be like, like, how can, and you can see it. If you're, how can you be like-minded with a false convert? How can you be like-minded with the world? If you are like-minded with a false convert and with the world, there's something wrong there. And the Lord will reveal that to you. Okay? Praise the Lord. He does. I'm here to tell you. Okay? Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, the love of Christ, being of one accord, of one mind. Like I said, I have a disagreement with my brother or my sister. This is what settles it. The scripture. What saith the scripture? What saith the scripture? That's what settles it. Okay? Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each, let each esteem other better than themselves. Okay? <laughs> Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Because remember, the infiltrator as well, the false convert, for all seek their own, not the things. Verse 21, for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Okay? And of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Right now, now see, it's like, well, you're saying we should, well, we need to be amongst the, the world. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And there the argument comes in, it's like, well, Oh, I, God, God doesn't want me to live in a coffin. But God doesn't want you to be like the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 on to verse 13. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. Right. We are in the world. We're not of the world. And while we are in the world, we are called to be ambassadors for Christ. Okay? But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, whether that physical or spiritual, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. Anyone who is called a brother. Those are fleshly, worldly things right there. The flesh that we are told to mortify, to kill, to put down. But yet God doesn't want you to live in a box, right? There's something wrong with you. That kind of response you're lost. You're lost. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within. But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. And, we'll, and let's remember John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Verses 14 on to verse 18 and then we'll be done. This is the Lord's prayer. Truly the Lord's uh, prayer. I have given them thy word. And the world hath hated them. Because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. Come out from amongst them and be ye separate. Yeah. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that they shouldest that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. For they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them the world. Hence, we are in the world and not of the world. We are in the world to be ambassadors for Christ. The false convert, you're of the world. Oh, you might have your own laws that you follow because of some infiltrator or something like that. You're still of the world.
like I said, this video was uh, brought about because of something that a, a brother of mine has recently gone through, and it just haunted me, because we're like-minded. And um, this is, video was made to, so that you can be on the lookout. Judge! You know? Because infiltrators and false converts are coming out of the woodwork. Just coming out in grand fashion. Multiplying. They're, they are increasing. <laughs> but we are decreasing. You need to watch out for these people. You need to watch out for the infiltrator. You need to watch out for the false convert. There is more, there is more hope for a false convert than for an infiltrator. Because the infiltrator, the footsteps that are behind them are that of the Vatican, that of Satan. It's the same as with the false convert. But is that false convert false only because they are ignorant? And once they are no longer in ignorant, they convert unto the true God? That's a different story. But when they are given the truth, but yet they persist and turn around and rend you? As happened to my brother. As happened to me. <laughs> Be on the lookout, friends. Be aware. These are the last days. And the redemption of the uh, purchased possession draweth nigh. We don't know when. We don't know when. But. Be vigilant. Be sober. Because your adversary the devil. Walketh around as a roaring lion. As a roaring, li roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. Beware. Take heed to these things. That's going to be it for this video. Hopefully this will help. I know we've gone over uh, these things quite a few times, but like I said, this, this was pertinent for today to go over. So going to be links in the description box for you to uh, consider as well. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, I hope this helps you. Thank you for all of those who help us, who pray for us. We love you so very much. Pray for one another. Pray for one another because, brethren, we are all that we have. I love you. And we will see you in the next video.